In 2009, the National Patient Safety Agency for England and Wales created some controversy when they became concerned about a cluster of cases in which a patient had suddenly died during a hip hemiarthroplasty. Their concern sparked a debate amongst orthopaedic surgeons and patient safety specialists, although perhaps surprisingly it didn't receive much public attention. This is surprising perhaps because there are 20,000 people in the UK every year who have a hip hemiarthroplasty following a fractured neck of femur, so it's a common operation. In this research paper, we look again at the issue that the National Patient Safety Agency raised. The issue was about bone cement, which surgeons have a choice whether or not to use when they do a hip hemiarthroplasty. One argument that's put against bone cement is that its use can cause bone cement implantation syndrome. When the cement's put into the hip joint, this disturbs the circulation and causes the blood pressure to drop and potentially the heart to stop. There's not a lot of evidence about how often this happens, and the aim of our study was to estimate how often it does happen in its more severe forms. The National Health Service in England and Wales has a system that asks all of its frontline staff to file a report any time there's an unexpected incident that leads to a patient being harmed. These reports end up in a national database called the National Reporting and Learning System, and there's now a major database of 9 million reports that have accumulated since 2003. We searched the National Reporting and Learning System for any incident report that mentioned hip cement and then looked in detail at the incident reports that we found to see how many we could say with a high degree of confidence sounded like bone cement implantation syndrome. When you find these reports, they're quite striking. Here's an example. These are written by clinical staff who witnessed the event directly. During cementation of femoral component, the patient suffered a cardiac arrest. Resuscitation commenced, re-arrested twice more, patient pronounced dead. We looked from 2005 to 2012. In total, we found 62 reports that seemed to describe bone cement implantation syndrome. In 41, so two thirds of these cases, the patient died. In 14, the patient had a cardiac arrest but was successfully resuscitated. And in the other seven, they were peri-arrest. As you can see, the number of reports generally increased over the years. If we look at the information from these reports, 39% of them described the patient deteriorating as the cement was being inserted. Another 10% said it happened shortly after, and 26% just said after. The other descriptions are shown in the table, but essentially the vast majority suggested that the deterioration was closely related to cement being inserted, within three minutes or so. Over the period that we studied, we know that there were about 180,000 hip hemiarthroplasties in England and Wales. So we can estimate that death, cardiac arrest or peri-arrest occurred in one in every 3,000 cases. So the risk is not enormous, but it's significant enough that we should try to understand it and take account of it. The key thing about this study is that it uses the source of data that's unusual and really quite valuable. Patient safety incident reports because they come from the whole of the health service across England and Wales in this case, let us detect problems that are too rare for normal studies to detect, but common enough that we should know about them. We can't draw any conclusion from our study about whether or not cement should be used. We only have data about one side of the story, in that our study doesn't say anything about the benefits that cement may have, but we can draw some conclusions. Bone cement implantation syndrome happens and it's killing people in the UK. It's rare, but it's not extremely rare. There are measures that anaesthetists and surgeons can take to reduce the risk of it happening, and it's important that they take these. There's also need for fuller research that weighs up the benefits and risks of using hip cement more completely, because our study clearly shows an ongoing issue that has not yet been wholly addressed by other research.